Mega Man ZX ended with a lot of open ends. Though being fair, ending the first entry on a major cliffhanger is nothing new for Mega Man. And yes, that is the most discreet way of me pointing you towards the past two Mega Man videos before watching this one. Mega Man ZX was all in all... Okay. It had a lot of rough spots here and there, such as the side quest system, and just the persistent backtracking that wasted my time. Well, the year after ZX's release was 2007, which happened to be Mega... well... Rockman's 20th anniversary. So we got Mega Man ZX Advent, the second and, as of now, final game in the Mega Man ZX series. And up until now, this is the only main timeline 2D platformer I've never played. Yeah, I played the Game Boy titles, Mega Man 2 popped my Mega Cherry. So ZX Advent's the only chance I've got to look at a Mega Man game after my first playthrough of it until the next game releases. Which is partially why I decided to separate it from the ZX1 video. And I say first playthrough, but ZX Advent actually does keep ZX1's two character system, so I did give it two playthroughs. And I will let y'all know right off the bat, I liked ZX Advent significantly more than ZX1. Not to say I disliked ZX1, I overall enjoyed my time when I did just the main story, I just had a lot of problems that I can say Advent fixes. And after telling like four people how much I loved it, I consistently received the reaction of, really? No one likes ZX Advent more than ZX1, which at the very least reinforces my desire to give my perspective. So let's just blast right into Mega Man ZX Advent. Advent takes place between three and seven years after ZX1, and yet again we have two playable characters to choose at the start. This time it's the Reploid Grey, or the Human Ash. Unlike Vent and Ale in the last game, these two are completely different characters, both having their own backstory separate from each other. As well, they both have real fleshed out personalities instead of being mostly the same like Vent and Ale were. Jumping the gun a bit, Vent and Ale do actually reappear as older characters in Advent, and they have a bit more differences given to them, which I'll come back to once relevant. Grey is pretty similar to X personality-wise. Naive, caring, moral good boy, and has a resolve to save as many people as possible. Someone pretty familiar that can help keep the story grounded in Mega Man a bit more than Ash does. And Ash, god I fucking love Ash. She's the most different from your typical Mega Man protagonist we've seen yet. Fun, kinda greedy, adventurous, tomboyish, but not self-centered either. She still cares about saving others. Looking at Grey, his story begins with- well. <laughs> Voices. Yeah, not only does ZX Advent have voice acting, it has English voice acting. Rockman Zex actually had Japanese voice acting as well, but it was removed for the Western release and they didn't create an English dub. Which is a shame because the Japanese voice acting gives some more life to the characters. My only issue with it in ZX1 is I'm not big on ventilation having the same voice actor as it reinforces how they're basically the same character, and it could have added some more flavor to differentiate them. Advent corrects that by giving Vent his own, more matching voice actor in English and Japanese. And looking at the English voice acting of ZX Advan... I've got no time for some kid who became a Mega Man by accident. You look like you could use a nice cold dip. It could be worse. It's on the same level as your cheesy 90s anime dub, and every once in a while I get a chuckle from those, so it's fine by me. The main cast, especially the villains like Prometheus, have some real conviction in their performance which at least keeps me immersed. And the new collection also has the option of using uncompressed voice clips rather than the original DS quality voiceovers. I'm kinda shocked they had this audio. Okay, and back to Grey's story, it begins with two soldier boys entering into a mysterious lab. Inside is a pod in the center of the room housing a sleeping rep Lloyd boy. While they decide to ignore it, Mavericks show up to shoot the soldiers and break open the pod in the process, waking up the Reploid boy. Said Reploid suffers from some really bad amnesia, yep, yeah, still anime as fuck. Suddenly Pandora shows up to tell the boy that his name's Grey, and he's also a Mega Man, just like her. She aims to kill Grey as the mind control process hadn't yet finished on him. Which opens up another question, but Grey just steals this gun off the floor and runs out, and it's kind of like a classic Mega Man game. And after you beat the easy intro boss, the whole place blows up, and Grey wakes up in what's known as the Hunter's Base. Hunters are essentially just bounty hunters that take work put up by the coalition government known as Legion. Legion came into being after after the war, though they don't specify which one, and it consists of representatives from each city. Basically, it's like the United Nations. Their most far-reaching decree is one that required humans to receive mechanical upgrades while Reploids were given set lifespans, both as a means to make humans and Reploids equal. Legion itself has been led for centuries by three heads known as the Sage Trinity, who consist of three humans turned Reploids known as Master Thomas, Master Mikhail, and Master Albert. I think pretty much any old Capcom head can tell that they're 
their names allude to Thomas Lights, Mikhail Cossack, and Albert Wesker. Do I frighten you? But there's no connections between any of the characters, just poetic parallels. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. Since Grey was rescued by the Hunters, he receives a Hunter's License, and is sent on his first mission to transport this mysterious package to Legion HQ. Now let's go to Ash's story. Ash is already a Hunter, and presumably has been for a while. She and her Hunter pals are on the hunt for Booty, which in today's mission is a biometal. The rest of the Hunters are a bit hesitant about it, while Ash decides she's I'm going to go ahead and meet our Booty face to face. After the end of her intro stage, she finds Prometheus, who promptly knocks Ash and her friends out. Luckily, she and the biometal container were saved by some other Hunters, and now she's got to get on the same train Grey did to transport the biometal. And actually important to note now, depending on which character you pick, it's heavily implied that the other one died during their intro. And later on, Vent appears in Ash's story, while Ale appears in Grey's, so depending on if Vent and Ale's mom popped out a boy or a girl, she just made two parallel universes. During the train ride, Ash and Grey hear a mysterious high-pitched voice, and as they're figuring out, Prometheus and Pandora show up to take what they identify as Biometal A and stop the hero. As a last resort, the hero Mega merges with Model A to create Mega Man Model A. Prometheus and Pandora run away, but not before telling both heroes that they've got to participate in the game of Destiny, and that if they defeat the other Mega Man in battle, they'll learn the truth about who they are. We knew from the start Grey had questions, though apparently Ash has some things unknown to her as well. Interesting with Model A is that he talks a hey, lot. Can you hear me? What happened? Why the frown? Yeah, the other biometal spoke in ZX1, but not to the extent Model A does, which makes him more like Grey and Ash's helper type character like Navi. Model A has far more personality than the other biometals, and it really shows because his dynamic with the two protagonists is slightly different. With Ash, he's a little more passive, while Grey, he's a bit more bossy. With Mega Man Model A formed, the game of Destiny has now officially begun. So let's get into how ZX Advent works. I'm gonna skip the gameplay basics because essentially it's the same as ZX1. The only two major changes is that weapon energy is no longer tied to a transformation, it's just one shared bar. The other is the removal of the overdrive system. I actually never mentioned in the last video, but it's essentially like an X-Factor from MVC3. Model A does not have the power to double Mega Merge like Model X, and Mega Man A never acquires any other biometals. Instead, Model A has a power known as A-Trans that allows it to copy the appearance and powers of the eight Pseudoroid bosses, and the five other Mega Men, meaning that there's a total of 15 forms in ZX Advent if we include the base form. Ash and Grey play exactly the same when copying pseudoroids. However, their charge shots in all of the Mega Men forms are different, except for Model ZX where Grey has a downward air thrust while Ale has an anti-air slash. I mostly preferred how Ash plays, because the anti-air on Model ZX one-shots a lot of enemies, and her charge shot on Model A is the reflect laser, which acts identical to Gemini laser from Mega Man 3. I did use Grey's sub-weapon on Model A more often than with Ash, since it goes faster than hers, but I really didn't use it often besides where the game guides me to do as such. All of the transformations, especially the pseudoroids, are a bit more situation than the ones from ZX1, but oddly enough, I don't entirely think that's a bad thing here. So give me a bit to explain that. As y'all recall, I had a lot of issues with zx one structure. Everything was too spread out, and because of the minimal amount of transporters, it led to a lot of walking. Well, ZX Advent fixes this by a lot. First, here's the map of ZX Advent. Immediately, you'll notice it's way smaller than ZX1's, and if you look closely, you'll see that many areas are disconnected from the rest of the map. Rather than being a 50-50 split of Mega Man and Metroidvania like ZX1, Advent is more like a 75-25 split in the Mega Man side's favor. With one exception, every stage is accessible from one of the four parts of the Hunter's base, and within nearly every part of the stage, you can pay 100 E-Crystals to activate a one-way teleporter. You can still only leave a stage from the room following the boss, but adding in the one-way teleporters minimizes backtracking so fucking much compared to ZX1. Which is great, because each time you get a new form, you start to to see how much of a past area opens up to you, just as a Metroidvania should. When you get Wheel Gator version 2, you notice all the blocks he could destroy, Sonichu lets you go through small spaces that bothered you, Ugoyle and other Goyle make these items grabbable, and just so many more examples. You're not meant to use all of these guys to get through a whole stage, they're tools, just like getting a new item in a Metroidvania title. Even Model P and Model F feel a lot more useful than their ZX1 versions because of how the stage design 
encourages their use. This system really made me feel like revisiting levels, so much in fact that after I got all the transformations, I did nearly every side quest during my Ale playthrough, and probably would have gone back to do them as Grey if I didn't save over the Grey file like a dumbass two hours after finishing it. The only three quests I skipped were these street racing minigames I didn't understand nor care to learn about, one that required finding 50 of these dudes throughout the map, no thanks, and a fetch quest in the junkyard. Okay, so as much as I love every other stage, the junkyard is absolutely awful. I hate this stage so much. During both of my playthroughs, this is where I had to take a break. It's actually where I stopped the first time to go work on the ZX1 video, and then on my second playthrough I got up and did a little grocery run at the head. However, the fun I had in the rest of the game stages overtakes my distaste for this one, so I'm not mega upset about it. Oh, and speaking of side quests, they actually fixed them, in the exact way I said I wanted them to in the last video. Like, some of y'all might have thought I did that on purpose for foreshadowing, that was a complete accident. I wrote that part before I turned on ZX Advent. So yeah, you can have as many quests going on at a time as you want, and some can be accepted before you even enter the stage they're done in. As a tip, this girl will ask you to get a flower from the waterfall ruins before your first visit. Pick this up because the reward for this quest is the eraser chip that lets you slash bullets, which is really convenient, especially since this quest opens up right after you acquire Model ZX. Oh, and just while I'm talking about stage design, I will be transparent that I did forget to turn save assist off for my playthrough, so keep that in mind with anything I say. Despite that, I didn't die that much compared to ZX1. The level design is way more fair, at least until it isn't. Advent gives you a substantial amount of lives, but it also has a habit of hiding data disks and extra collectibles behind walls of instant death spikes. It is definitely an issue and probably a good reason to turn on save assist, but it's not as bad as even some of the base stages in ZX1. So bosses are actually really neat in ZX Advent. Since Model A copies the bosses it fights, the need for the ranking system based upon biometal damage is gone. Because of that, beating the bosses normally is a little bit harder, at least in your base forms. With the numerous transformations you have, thinking beyond the box for how to beat a pseudoroid becomes more important. I didn't really do that until Boss Rush in my second playthrough, however, since I am a bit monkey-brained in these games. I pretty much only used Model ZX once I unlocked it. I have gone back since turning off the recorder to try some bosses again, and it is just an interesting experience. You're even incentivized to do this by these guys who stand up in Hunter's base that reset the boss stations, so you can go back and get one of three medals that you earn by beating a boss with a specific stipulation. I haven't gained too many of these quite yet, but I do actually want to try it for a later point. Oh, and actually you do fight a few bosses at points other than the end of the stage. Ugoil and Argoil are fought at the very start, while Mega Man P is fought around the middle of his stage. This is done so that stages can design themselves around the idea that you 100% have that transformation transformation on hand. Thing is, you never actually have too many options on where to go next in ZX Advent. With as many transformations as there are, you've got to make sure that you can actually utilize some of them in stages for reasons other than finding extras. One downside with so many transformations is that it does feel a little bit sluggish to transform near the end. However, on top of changing with a little wheel or by pausing like in the previous game, ZX Advent lets you use the touchscreen to instantly change your form. I'm gonna guess this was really intuitive on the DS, so it's a shame that now you've got to do an awkward right analog stick movement to get it working. Really not the biggest deal, just evidence that 1 to 1 DS console ports are pretty impossible with current hardware. Don't worry buddy, I know you tried your best, but there is a reason you're fucking covered in dust. Go! Before we get back to the story, let's talk about the soundtrack for both games. Most of each game ranges in an okay area compared to other Mega Man titles. They don't consistently get me quite as hyped as the tracks from the X or Zero games, however, they have some really high highs. Some real fucking bangers in here. ZX1 might just have my favorite credits tune in any Mega Man game, and the theme from the Mysterious Lab in Advent has these Sega Saturn sounding flutes that remind me of Panzer Dragoon, so I love it immensely. If I had to describe their tones, I'd say Advent has a few more songs that emphasize the mystery of the ZX era, while ZX1 feels a bit more tokusatsu-y, if you get what I mean. If you're gonna ask which one I like more, it's just hands down ZX Advent, but I still prefer all the Zero soundtracks over it. There's more songs I can drive to in it, and I just feel they set the atmosphere a bit better. After the first stage, the train breaks down from the Maverick Raid, and now Mega Man A needs to find a bit more of a roundabout way to reach the Sage Trinity. The Trinity does actually nicely call to let the hero know that they don't have to turn in the Biometal anymore since it Mega Merged with them. However, they'd still like to have an in-person meeting, so we gotta get to them. In the first two stages following the train, we're introduced to four new Mega Men that have Mega Merged with the four Biometals representing the Guardians, all of whom named after moons of Saturn including Atlas, Thetis, Sharnak, and Aloys. 
with models F, L, P, and H respectively. You don't fight them yet though. Atlas and Thetis pretty much come by to call you a bitch and offhandedly mention they're working with Prometheus and Pandora, while Aluis and Chernak retrieve model W which has somehow found its way into a tower, and then they also call you a bitch. Once you do start fighting the Mega Men, secret cipher messages hidden within model A about the game of destiny are revealed to you. We'll come back to that in a little while because I want to talk about model A for a minute. I mentioned earlier that model A's copy ability is known as A-Trans, which is the same as Axel's copy ability from the X series. That, put together with its very obvious design of both the Biometal and Mega Man A, it tells us pretty quickly that this is meant to be like Axel. One of my favorite little notes on it is that it's got this little bottle cap where his jewel should be since it was broken in X8 and we don't know his final fate in the X series as of now. And as Model A has amnesia, learning who created him is an intrinsic part of ZXA's narrative. And maybe this is a good time to place this. Last time I said the Biometals don't house the real souls of the characters they represent, and that could be a bit wrong. Every English thing I could find just said that CL placed the data, fighting data, personalities, and more abstract nouns like that into the Biometals. However, in the Japanese version of ZX1, one of CL's log entries states, these metals that lodge their souls and have wills of their own. Now, soul is normally a pretty one and done deal for me when it comes to any stories with clones, so I'm about 90% convinced it's the original heroes now. The remaining 10% skepticism is just that the way CL obtained their cyber elves or souls is never explained, which I think still leaves room for them to go either way in a ZX advantageous. I just want to give thanks to Stormshadow210 for pointing this out to me in the comments, and after checking the Mega Man knowledge base, I also see the word soul being used there. Yeah, I know it looks bad when I never looked at a wiki page, but I swear I researched the shit out of everything else. I was just really confident on this one since the in-game English version pointed the other way. Always feel free to correct me when I make an error in my videos, and due to the interpretive nature of this one, it took Storm Shadow a while to convince my stubborn ass. God, I would never be friends with myself. <laughs> Once Mega Man A meets up with the Sage Trinity, Master Albert reveals that he's actually the one who orchestrated the entire game of Destiny by abusing his high status. For his scientific studies, Master Albert wants to find the peak of evolution by forging the perfect Mega Man, revealing four biometal Ws in his possession. Albert comes close to eradicating Mikhail and Thomas before Mega Man A forces him to run away. Though right before, Albert reveals that he knows something about both of the protagonists as they're made in his image. And he's probably the only one with this information, because Master Thomas says that the Legion databases showed up blank for both of their profiles. With the disheartening news, Model A and Mega Man A decide that they're going to make Albert spill the beans on their pasts, which involves them going to different areas to stop Mavericks and hopefully procure pieces of Model W. They procure none of them. With one more chance to find a piece in the quarry by the Hunter Camp, we find the final player in the game of Destiny, Mega Man ZX, who as I said earlier, appears as Vent and Ash's story and Aelin Grey's. They even have anime transformation scenes where they clearly put a bit more budget into ales. Nice. After beating Mega Man ZX, which by power scaling logic implies Mega Man A is the strongest Mega Man, we open up the last cipher locked within Model A, which altogether reveals that Albert narrates the ciphers, he's planned the game of destiny for centuries, created Prometheus and Pandora, and forcibly biomerged them with Model W, Albert seems to have chosen all of the Mega Man at some point in the past, and once he collects the amount of Model Ws needed, he will form Ouroboros, which the Mega Man King will receive. Mega Man A and ZX kind of realize that they're both fighting Model W, and after actually destroying one Model W, decide that they need to fight side by side. Then the next three stages are open up to us, which really just leads into the end game by revealing how Prometheus and Pandora actually aren't working for Albert anymore. They've existed for centuries, thus implying to me that the length between ZX1 and Zero could be more in like the 500 year range, and that there may be a third reploid created at the same lab as the two twins. I think this, as well as the audio dramas, actually actually go a long way to humanize Prometheus and Pandora more than ZX-1. With every stage finished, Mega Man A finds a transporter that should lead them directly to Albert's hideout underneath a volcano. Upon arrival, they find out that he has a fuck ton of Model Ws, because again, he's been at this a long while. Upon entering, Prometheus and Pandora show up to strike him down because of the deeply ingrained hatred they have for him. And they may have also been the ones who forcibly Mega Merged all of the chosen Mega Men, including Serpent, the four new guys, and Mega Man ZX. Since they want to destroy everything Albert made, Mega Man A needs to fight them, at least until they hit the peak of anger, which as you recall from last time, awakens Model W. In this case, because of so much anger, it awakens all the Model Ws forming Ouroboros. 
Albert's primary reploid body is shown, which was actually the one created at the lab. Albert boards Ouroboros as the volcano area explodes, with Mega Man A barely escaping while Prometheus and Pandora presumably perish. Right now, Ouroboros marks the end of the Destiny of Destruction, which both games have led up to. To combat it, Mega Man ZX pulls out the old Guardian's airship that they seem to now lead, and using it, they charge straight into Ouroboros, and I gotta say, this thing is such a neat stage. It's a bro broken fucking mess of organic and mechanical materials, like everything no one wants to think about when it comes to evolution through technology. As it turns out, Albert also has the ability to A-trans, but in his case, it's where everything Model W absorbs becomes a part of him, thus creating our boss rush that we need to defeat before Albert can confront us and reveal who we really are. There's also a bit of a fake-out second boss rush with all the four Mega Men, as since they aren't on Albert's side, they know that they need to defeat Model A since they're the strongest. Strongest. Luckily, Mega Man ZX shows up just in the nick of time to make this into their fight instead of ours, allowing for Grey or Ash to confront Albert and learn the truths of their identity. For Ash, he tells that she is actually his distant descendant from before he moved to a reploid body to join the Sage Trinity, while Grey was a backup body that Albert planned to use for himself or as a successor to his throne as Mega Man King. With those origins, Grey and Ash both had Albert DNA within them, which allowed them to Mega Merge with the container of Albert's plan, Model A, as this is not actually Model Axel, but Model Albert, and holy shit, is this both the cheesiest and best bait and switch they could have done. There's hints for this within the ciphers, but everything design-wise about Model A points towards it as Model Axel, so I just did not see this one happening. Since neither Ash and Grey are adhering to Albert's plan, Plan, he transforms into a pretty tough dragon to extinguish them. It took me a few tries to really nail down his pattern as his hitbox is here, while his attacks do everything to keep me from there. Once you do defeat it, Albert reiterates his goal to find and become Evolution's Extreme. He will recreate the world, claiming himself already to have achieved godhood, triggering the much easier Phase 2, where Albert is in a mechanical angel-like form. Once defeated, Albert refused to accept his faults or even beg like Wily. As both of them struggle to stand up, Albert tells the hero, You can have your gentle peace and leisurely rot in it leading into the explosion of Ouroboros. Mega Man falls down, though, and doesn't escape on their own. Mega Man ZX actually separates from Model Z so he can stop the four Mega Men while Venter Ale saves A. Our final look at Ouroboros is of it exploding and falling into the ocean. In the finale, the hero wakes up with Model A by their side and gets a quick pep talk from Vent or Ale. Since they've all figured out who they are, there's nowhere else to go but forward. So Ash decides that she's gonna go back on the hunt for booty, while Grey chooses to see the world that he's still unknown to the wonders of. Pretty much the only question we have left is whether the four Mega Man and Model Z made it out of Ouroboros. Which isn't all that much to want- Whoa, wait, secret ending. Yeah, if you beat the game on hard mode, which I'll tell you I have not done yet, I looked this up online, Master Thomas reveals that he actually agreed with Albert that the world needs to be reset, with the four missing Mega Men appearing by his side, teasing them as the villains of the non-existent third game in the series. Ignoring what could have been for a third game, ZX Advent is a really full experience. Ash is a great subversion to normal Mega Man heroes, the increase in transformations and minimizing of backtracking makes the game much more pleasant to play, and the story wraps up nicely what ZX1 started besides the secret ending. Mega Man was not far from experiencing its big drought and part of that would include the developer Inti Creates branching to other ventures. To my knowledge, they aren't on bad terms with Capcom, but given how they have their spiritual successor series Azura Striker Gunvolts, I don't think they're clamoring to come back to the ZX franchise. For the foreseeable future, I guess we'll have to fill in our own blanks about the time between ZX and Legends. Though as it is, ZX Advent did everything I wanted ZX to fix, so I don't have much to complain about. Pick up the entire Zero ZX collection on your platform of choice, and look out for a more casual video I'll post in the next few days, looking at the extras of both of the two ZX games. 